Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Mele Kalikimaka, and welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. Over the past year, I've gotten many, many, many new subscribers, and for that, I just want to give you a heartfelt thank you for making the conscious choice to share a few minutes every month with the content of my humble show here on the YouTubes. And this is the part of the year where I get to express my gratitude to you, my loyal viewing audience. Uh, it's become kind of a tradition here at the Lagoon of Mystery. Started a few years ago with Tiki Bob's. Last year I had the Pufferfish. This year I have uh, carved Vanuatu slit drum ornaments. And if you stick around to the end of the show, I will share how you can get one for your very own. Uh, Vanuatu slit drums are really, really cool. Uh, they're also known as slit gongs. They are uh, distinct and endemic to the island of Vanuatu. And if you are at home saying, wait a minute, Vanuatu is part of Melanesia, not Polynesia. Polynesia is tiki, Melanesia is not tiki. Well, go ahead and give yourself a cookie because you're correct. Vanuatu is part of Melanesia, and you are up to date on your cultural heritage of the South Pacific Islands. Uh, Vanuatu has a distinct and very, very cool carving tradition there, and it inspired me to try a, my hand at carving a Vanuatu slit drum or slit gong ornament for this year. It's got some uh, elements in it that's kind of challenging that I haven't tried before, but um, I think I did okay. So if you want to come along with me, I'll show you how I made these ornaments so you can try it at home yourself if you are of a mind to. And come back here at the end and I will share with you how to get your very own. If you saw my Tiki Bob Christmas video, then you know that what I use for the ornaments is uh, Mountain Juniper. <clears throat> This is a tree that grows readily and rampantly around the Central Texas area. It's mostly called cedar around here. It's mountain juniper. It has a little cedar aromatics to it. And what's really great is that many of the branches grow inch, inch and a half in diameter, which is a fantastic width for this. I clean the bark off. It's very nice hard wood, not too hard to carve into, yet it holds uh, detail fairly well. And I really enjoy working with it. And again, it's really cheap and common around here. I get the pieces, I cut, it, cut the branches to length uh, between three and four inches long. So say three and a half inches. For this, as I am doing a Vanuatu carving, these are columnar and they have a curve on the back of the head. So it all curves towards the center and only the front is going to be flat. So with this, to achieve this, you could do different ways. You could use a uh, angle grinder, table saw, any kind of edge blade you could cut it and trim it and everything but since i want it nice and smooth and rounded and curved i'm using a belt sander and this has got 80 grit on there i have it clamped to the workhorse sawhorse and the 80 grit is really aggressive and i can grind this down fairly quickly a lot of different ways to approach this but this is the way i'm doing it simply because it's most convenient for me Thank you. 
and here you have it. Nice tapered front and back. Just perfect for the Vanuatu drum carving. I printed out several pictures of slip drums from Vanuatu. This is specifically to help as a reference for my ornaments as I make them. I'm not going to copy any of these directly, but I will use them as reference points so I can generally maintain the feel of the slip drum style that is distinctive and unique to Vanuatu. Because of this, I'm making sure to draw everything in ahead of time. Uh, again, I'm not going to use these lines entirely to guide me. I mean, they are guides and that's what they are. They're suggestions, but I can vary from them as necessary as the wood guides me. The faces are oval, going up to the peak, and then in the middle we have the nose comes through the middle and then the brow and the socket of the nose down far, but the nostrils are going to flare out. And the eyes themselves are large and round and right here in the middle of the side. And this is a good start. I'm going to use this as the basis for my initial cuts and we'll see where it takes us. To make the initial cuts on here, I'm using a ball headed uh, cutting burr. Uh, this is a Dremel number 107, I think. Uh, regardless, it's pretty common, just a round Burr that spins and gouges out wood and so I'm going to use that to make the initial guideline cuts. carve in the brow ridge, I like to use this uh, narrow cylinder cutting bit. Uh, it gives me a lot of control, easy to constrain the depth of the cut, and it gives me a nice smooth uh, uh, bite in there. I like cutting this brow separation in here. It just gives the upper part of the face a little more definition and uh, adds visual interest. Now, one of the most distinctive elements of the Vanuatu sculptures, carvings, apart from the obvious slit drum aspect, is the nose. There is a distinctive undercut on the nose with really large nostrils. And if you leave this off, uh, well, it, it's just not going to have as uh, big an impact, uh, distinctive. So I'm using the, the ball cutter bit 
and I'm just going in at an angle and trying to dig out there anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch, just get way down deep to excavate that wood. <laughs> And from this angle, it's following the curve of the semicircle that I'm having that I routed out there. So I'm going to continue to dig in there and uh, grind out that wood until the nose part is uh, free hanging. And if you can see that, hopefully it's visible, we have a nice undercut to that nose to leave it hanging right there. Now following the concept of the distinctive nose, uh, the Vanuatu figures have really large nostrils, very pronounced nostrils. So that's what I am going to do now. Again, using the round ball bit, able to get in there, give me a controlled cut, and I can go pretty deep to uh, have a more pronounced effect. That's one side. Got a pretty deep nostril right there, and I'm going to repeat it on the opposite side. And this is important. If you have the bit skip and take out a piece of wood so that it doesn't match the other side, you can continue to grind down, cut back either side to make sure that they fall into symmetry because uh, the, the different nose designs are so flexible you can you know go much larger nostrils more narrow you can narrow the nose any of that so a mistake isn't necessarily a mistake because you can always cover it up there go, flared nostrils For the final cleanup of the ornament, I use a narrow cylinder cutting bit to get in there and remove the various ridges and gouges and scratches and cuts that are left over from the uh, carving process. Makes it nice and tidy. Now I'm going to install the screw eyes into the tops of the ornaments. It makes it easier to handle them when I'm uh, putting the finish on. I'm using very, very tiny, narrow uh, cutting bit to draw a pilot hole in the top. Um, I was in an event recently and someone referred to me as Mr. Pilot Hole because of my proclivity to drill pilot holes in all my various tiki projects. So I guess if the uh, pilot hole fits. Screw eye, just, just a tiny uh, 2 16th and a half inch 
screw eye and twist it in. If it gets tight, a small pair of pliers will help. Get a better grip and screw it down flush with the wood. And we're good. Now that I have all of the carving, routing, dremeling done on the ornaments, it is time to give them some color. Now, the mountain cedar has nice color. Uh, in general, it's white and it can be streaked with uh, reds and yellows and stuff. For these small ornaments though, that's not what I'm looking for. I want a more uh, robust, deeper, richer color. That is why I am going back to my stain. Uh, this is Minwax Gunstock, which gives it a, a reddish hue, reddish brown hue. And I'm just taking a little bit with a brush and doing a liberal application to give this a deeper, richer coloration that is more in line with what you might actually find there in the Vanuatu Islands. Once I have all of the, whoops, missed a spot. Once the ornament is completely covered in stain, taking just a plain paper towel, you can also take a rag and going over it and wiping off all of the excess. If you want it to be darker, you can leave it on longer, but I don't want this to be terribly dark. So, even coat. Now we're gonna let this dry 24 hours and proceed with the uh, finishing. Now, if you've watched any of these uh, ornament builds in the past, you'll know that I like to use boiled linseed oil as the first base coat. Now, since this is an ornament and it won't be exposed outside, you probably don't need this, but it works for me and I like it, so I'm gonna stay consistent. Boiled linseed oil will penetrate into the wood and then also dry over the course of a couple of days to form a protective top coat. And I like that because it gives the wood multiple layers of protection. After the boiled linseed oil has fully cured, good two, maybe three days, depending on your individual uh, environmental conditions, uh, now it's time to put on the coat of sanding sealer, which is uh, de-waxed shellac. De-waxed shellac if you remember from my previous videos has the wax removed and it is essentially a universal bonding agent it'll stick to anything and pretty much anything will stick to it so it makes a great coat to go over different types of finish uh, the oil finish to make sure anything that goes on top of that will stick and adhere uh, because I'm going to do uh, some acrylic paint on here I wanted to make sure the attachment went well without problem shellac is very good very easy to use uh, it does dissolve in alcohol though so I would recommend not soaking your ornaments in rum or anything like that. But it's, shellac is an easy, easy top coat 
or middle coat or base coat to deal with. You can thin it using denatured alcohol. And it just goes on real easy. And on top of that, because alcohol is the base that it is uh, dissolved in, the solvent that it's dissolved in, it evaporates very quickly. So within a couple of hours, this will be fully and completely dried and ready to go on with the next coat. With the shellac now dried on the ornament, it's time to add a little bit of spot color with paint. I like to carve into each of these ornaments a varying uh, designs using holly, berries, and leaves to denote that these are indeed holiday ornaments. And I paint the berries red and the leaves green. And that's a festive little Yule homage to pre-Christian Europe. And it adds quite a festive motif to the ornaments. Now, we let the acrylic paint dry, and the final step is a top coat, and we are done. After one final top coat of shellac, it's time to set these aside and let them hang and dry and cure so they are ready for the tree. Still here? Good. Glad you stuck it out. Now I want to share with you how you can get your very own ornament. Each ornament is handcrafted, hand carved, hand painted, hand designed by myself. No two are alike. Uh, you know, they're not very much alike at all. Each one is different and distinct and I try to make it that way. So if you've been here before and entered for the pufferfish or the tiki bobs, you know the drill. The way to enter at no charge to yourself is to one, like this video like and follow A Moment of Tiki here on the YouTubes, and leave a comment down below in the comments section, anything you want to share. That's fine, I am not putting any restrictions on what you share in the comments below. After last year, however, I have to put in an additional stipulation. I need you to provide me with a way to contact Otherwise, this whole thing falls apart. I had a couple of people win pufferfish last year from the comments down below that left me no way to contact them. They didn't have a presence on YouTube or they used uh, screen names. I could not track them down. Uh, I messaged, uh, at message. Anyway, I'm going to have an email address for myself down in the comments. Please, if you enter and if you actually want an ornament, if you win, please send me contact information. I will not use this for anything else other than communicating with you on how to get your ornament. Now, YouTube wants me to tell you that they are in no way, shape, or form affiliated with this competition. It's not even a competition, it's a drawing. Uh, so YouTube has nothing to do with this. So don't hold them liable, don't give them any credit. There's nothing about YouTube that has anything to do with this giveaway other than the fact that I am coming to you via YouTube. But wait, there's more. There's two other chances to win if you're of the mind to. I have an Instagram account, Lagoon of Mystery. If you go to Instagram, and I will have a link down below, you may enter to win via Instagram, and I will have the rules to the post that I'm linking to below. Also, if you're of a mind to, you can go to Facebook, and I have a page for A Moment of Tiki. I will be giving away another ornament on A Moment of Tiki, the Facebook group. So if you go there, and I will again have a link down below, you may enter a third time. So that's three chances to win. This is my holiday gift to you. 
and I will announce the winners here, there, and everywhere on December 24th, Christmas Eve. I won't publish a separate episode, which I've done in the past, but rather I will post the announcements of the winners here below for all three locations. That just seems a lot more simple and uh, straight to the point. So, anyway, Meliki Maka, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Yule, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Festivus, and we will once again postpone the airing of the grievances. But, you know, if you have a Festivus pole that needs uh, some ornaments, this will go quite nicely. Until then, aloha. Aloha.